Are you hungry but only have 30 minutes to meal prep? Then download my new e-cookbook, What's a Meal Prep, at successfitnessstore.com. You will get three step-by-step -step written and visual recipes for one high-protein meal that's under 600 calories. I'll help you cook fresh salmon, steam fresh broccoli, and quinoa in under 30 minutes to help you stay on track of your fitness goals. So go to successfitnessstore.com to download your copy today. Welcome to the Success Fitness Podcast. I am your host, Christian Evans. This podcast is about helping improve our relationship with nutrition and exercise to achieve success in our fitness journey. And today's special guest, Sharday Baskin, will help us do just that by sharing their story of how they overcame poor eating habits and with the help of her sister and kickboxing community, her kickboxing community, how it helped her to lose 100 pounds. Without further ado, Success Fitness family, please welcome Sade Baskin to the podcast. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am good. I am good. So where are you from? And is that where you currently are? And how's the weather down there? Yeah, so I am originally from Detroit, Michigan, born okay. and raised, 313. Um, but I have been in Philadelphia for the last four years. Um, it was four years this March. So we're over four years now. Um, the weather here is great. It's hot and humid. Um, I got you. I'm inside, so I feel good, but it's probably like about 90 degrees today. I got you. I got you. What made you uh, move that, that transition? So the Cliff Notes version of that story is I had reached a point in Michigan where I just didn't feel like I was growing anymore. I felt stagnant. And um, a friend of mine, one of my really good friends had moved here like seven years prior. So of course I'd come to visit her a bunch of times and I loved her leave. 2017 was the summer I also came for her birthday. I had like the most amazing time. And we had joked like, oh, I should just move to Philly. And I just joking. Fast forward to my life falling apart at the end of 2017. 2018 came for the first time I did a vision board, right? I was totally against that before. Like these weirdos with these vision boards, but that stuff works. So I wrote down what I wanted my life to look like. And that is the first time I really so January 2018 was the first time I ever wrote down, I want to lose weight, like I want to be healthy. So I knew just my lifestyle in Michigan really wouldn't accommodate that, just not even from the weight loss aspect, just the woman I wanted to be in general. And so I just made a plan to move uh, that July. I said, I'm going to save up for seven months, but God had another plan for me because I got a job offer in March of 2018 and I bought my one way ticket. And it's okay. Been, it's okay. So yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Now you mentioned about writing down on that vision board about you know wanting to lose weight. So what or how did you come to that conclusion of hey, there's something going on to where I'm not personally happy about about what I see on the scale. And tell me a backstory about at least how you got to that point to where I need to lose weight. So right before that point. So what led you to that? So I have been trying to diet and lose weight probably since I was about nine years old. I'm 36 now. Um, and so in 2018, I was 30. Uh, yeah, no, 31. So at that point, I had been trying, you know, I did every diet you can think of, Whole30. I had done Weight Watchers a few times. Um, I did the, you know, the Slim Fast diet. You name it, I had, I had tried it. Nothing worked. I would lose 10 pounds here, 20 pounds there, gain it back plus some. And, you know, um, I had got to a point where I got put on blood pressure medication. Um, they were telling me I was pre-diabetic. None of my clothes fit. I was up to like a size 24, 26 at this time. Um, and getting on the airplane, I had to ask for a seatbelt extension. So those kind of things started happening. I, my mobility started to decrease. And um, I just was like, I, I got to make this happen. Like, and I want to, I want to do it before I'm 40. Right. How did uh, being on blood pressure medicine, how did that make you feel? Um, kind of like I was walking in the footsteps of my, my parents, my grandparents, gotcha. um, mm -hmm. that I thought that I was doing the right things and I wasn't, I mean, I knew I wasn't. At the I time. gotcha. I gotcha. You, know you just feel like, no, not me. It's fine. Yeah. Not me. Of course not. No. Yeah. That's them. No, I'm still on, Never me. I'm still on yeah. blood pressure medication now, but it's much more controlled and I'm on a I gotcha. now, but, um, I gotcha. 
it just made me, you know, it made me feel like, dang, you know, I'm, I'm a statistic. I'm about to be a statistic if I don't get it together. I got you. I got you. And the reason why I asked that is because I remember being on blood pressure medicine uh, probably about probably 20, 2007, 2008 ish, mm-hmm. somewhere, somewhere around there. And at least at that time, I just felt so lightheaded, you okay. know, with the prescription that, you know, I was given and just, I felt like I was more hungry, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, and I'm like, you know, you're telling me, okay, you don't, don't eat so much or whatever. And it's like, but this is making, or you just feeling, and it's all just an experiment, but just, you know, with all that being said, like you said, it's, you know, you, of course not me. You know, that's, you know, my family members or somebody else other than me. I'm young. This can this can never happen. So once that kind of thought process through your head, where did you go from there in regards to your weight loss journey? So from there, um, I still wasn't ready to make the change. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a social worker by degree, but I work in real estate now. So I still haven't forgotten a lot of the things about the change uh, process. So I stayed in the contemplation part of change for a long time, you know, and I wasn't really committed to it. I was looking for a quick fix. I wanted to get the weight off fast. Um, I had contemplated weight loss surgery for a while, but, um, you know, I I just didn't think that was the right, excuse me, the right choice for me. And so I was always trying to do a gimmick, you know, and I didn't really make a change. The, 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 The pivotal point for me was, let me back up. So my sister in 20, the end of 2020, she wanted to um, lose a certain amount of weight before her 30th birthday. Okay. okay. And is it your sister? Is she older than you or are you younger than My sister is younger. Okay. She's five years younger than me. Okay. Um, excuse me, just one second, sorry. Yeah, same thing over here. Yeah. <laughs> Try to she, keep it on deck. It's a... Listen, sometimes getting that water in, I won't say it's a struggle, but it's a struggle. Just some days, some days it tastes different. You know, you didn't cool it down enough. At least far as to me, I have to have my, well, I prefer my water ice cold. And um, later I've been going to the store. Usually I get a six pack of uh, gallon water. So six gallons of water that lasts me throughout the week. Been there three times this week. They don't have it. So I'm all thrown off. (laughs) I'm all thrown off. But go back to the store you're talking about your sister. So she's five years younger and she had gotten up to the highest weight she had ever been. At this point, I think I was like 370, 380. Um, and she was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be over 300 pounds by my 30th birthday. I was like, okay, so see, we're going to do it together. Now at this point, she is still in, she's in Michigan. I'm in Philly, but we kind of started our own like support group. So every Sunday, me, her and our mom would get on the phone and talk about what we did during the week as far as eating and activity, what went well, what we could have done better and how we plan to be better the next week. So we did that for a few months. My sister every week was like, I'm on it. And she was losing weight. Me and my mom, oh, I messed up this week. Oh, you know, I did this and and we weren't losing any weight. So again, this is the tail end of 2020. So now we're in the the top part of 2021. COVID COVID is already in full effect, whatever, right? All right. My birthday's in April and I had a cousin that lived in Miami. So I said, okay, for my, my 35th birthday, I went to Miami. And though I had used the seatbelt extension many times before, this time for whatever reason was different. I felt a I lot gotcha. of came around that this time, right? So yeah. when I went to Miami, whatever, cool, I'm off the plane. That's an hour or two hours, whatever. So mm-hmm. I get there with my cousins and we're taking pictures and I'm looking at the pictures and I'm like, y'all not getting my best angle. Like, this is not, this is not what I look like. And right. so, so they're not saying nothing, but I'm just every pic, and I'm a picture person. I love taking pictures. I got you, I got you. Picture in the moment. And uh-huh. I, every picture, I hate it. I was like, that's what I look like? Yeah. Oh, now this trip was supposed to be part Miami and part Puerto Rico. I got you. I canceled the second part of it. I said, I'm sorry, wow. I'm going back to Philly. I came back to Philly for the last part of the trip because I was just so disgusted and just, I was tired. All the walking we had to do, I was just exhausted. And I'm like, I don't feel 35. I feel 65, you know? And there's some people that are 65 that are in great shape. But in my mind, I'm like, I shouldn't be feeling this tired. Right, 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 right. The last part, and I said, 
you got to make a change. Now, my sister's 30th birthday was coming up in August. I got you. And I said, I don't even have a weight loss plan by August, but I want to lose something before. And we had decided to go to Puerto Rico as well. I was going to mm-hmm. be the test, the test dummy to go right. in April and let them know how it was going to be in August. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So I came back to Philly. Now, in the pandemic, I was trying to get some walking in. So I would walk my neighborhood and pass this kickboxing gym all the time. And I would just look at it and be like, oh, I wonder what that's like. So this time I said, okay, let me look them up. They had a free trial class. I said, okay, just, just see how you like it. You, you're not paying the money, just see if you like it. I went to that trial class and I never left. Awesome. I did not expect awesome. to that much. The coaches are phenomenal there at Fight Fit, Fight Strong. Mm-hmm. Um, they were so supportive. And then they let me know, hey, we also have a nutritionist on staff because it sounds like wow, you want okay. I was like, sign me up. I want it all. Okay. And I made a, and that was kind of to answer it your question like that was what did it It was that trip to Miami you know my sister kind of lit the fire a little bit I got you I still wasn't committed and so when I got back I just did a lot of self-reflection I just was like I gotta get real about what I need to do like and I stepped on the scale and I was 385 I'm sure Mm -hmm. at some point I'm I'm confident I was 400 pounds I got you I got you oh and how tall are you now I'm five seven okay so five seven with your highest weight was you said close to you you're thinking in your head it was 400 40 weight was 385 wow okay Okay. well right now i'm this morning i'm (laughs) 284.2 so i gotcha i gotcha i gotcha so when you mentioned about like the pictures um you know what was it like what was that feeling like looking in those pictures you know were you were you loathing were you disappointed were you like oh it's not that bad or was it just like no um like just I, nothing just looked right for you nothing looked right for me mm-hmm. um, none of my clothes seemed to lay right on my body um one thing that people have always praised me for and i've i like it and then i hate it sometimes they've always told me my whole life i've always been a bigger person you know oh you're, you're so confident like you, you got such confidence for a big girl you know and again, I know they're coming from a good place when they say those things, but whatever. So for the first time, I was not confident and I didn't like that. For the first time, I didn't want to take a picture, didn't want to post a picture. I did like I, my face was just I didn't even recognize my face. It just looked so swollen. You know, it was so much fat under here. And I just didn't look I didn't look healthy. I looked older. I look much younger now than I did five years ago. I just looked at a picture today. I got you. Five years ago, I looked older than I do right now. Wow. So it was just a, a lot of things. It was that it was feeling tired, looking mm-hmm. tired, looking older, and just not enjoying the person that I saw in the mirror. And I know that there's a lot of, um, in the in the body positivity community, because I struggle with that too. I struggle with, you know, it's not necessarily about me wanting to look thin, but I also don't want to apologize for loving the way that I look now versus how I look then. I, you know, I struggle with that too, because I'm not saying I hated my body or I hated myself, but I didn't like it either. So it's like, you know. With that being said, that's interesting to bring that up, is do you feel it's, you just mentioned it. So do you feel it's okay to want better like now that you've actually done better and gotten better from your standards, not so much society, but from your standards, your personal goals, do you do you feel like now it's okay to look back at it and say, hey, you know what? I did want better at that time. Therefore, I am here now. Because you mentioned about the body, body positivity community. And I get that. And listening to what you just said makes me makes me think about. How many people like resonate with you with the thought of, am I wrong? Is something wrong with me because I want it better for myself at that time? Yeah, um, now, yes, definitely looking back, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't have any regrets. In the beginning of the weight loss journey, I felt like I was betraying myself. Excuse me. I felt like I was betraying that big girl version of me or I was, I was turning my back on the big girls. But at the same time, it's like, this is for your health. You know, and I know that there's an, there's an argument or there is argument that, you know, just because you are big does not mean you're unhealthy. 
cool. I can rock with that. But for me, the way my back and knees and ankles and his blood pressure and they telling me, I, you know, the blood work don't lie. You telling me I have a pre-diabetic, my glucose levels is crazy. My cholesterol is out of, you know, out of whack. I'm not healthy at this size. And that is so important to hear. I'm just taking all that in because we do live in this super hyper visual world um, right now to where it's, okay, what you see is kind of like what you get and don't question it at all. And not every single question is coming from a place of malice. Sometimes it's coming from a place of maybe relatability. Kind of like what I asked you about the blood pressure because I can relate to it, yeah. you know? Um, and once you think about that, it's like, okay, there, there are more things going on than what anybody sees just on the surface. So you mentioned about, oh, being a, um, being a or the big girl with confidence and it's what does confidence have to do and I could be wrong for asking it from this angle but correct me if I'm wrong what does confidence have to really do with if I'm healthy or not like from the inside like you said it's I'm seeing these reports that these doctors are giving me you know and it's not looking good for me Right. You know, so that is a lot to, I would say, as far as deal with that. But I just don't know how, like you said, like that community or outside communities really, really know how important that is to understand what's going on versus looking at, you know, the outside. Hey, I'm beautiful. Listen, I understand, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But if the doctor noticing something different, your insides are not so pretty, you know, you know, these readings are kind of ugly, then what steps do you take for yourself to go forward? And like you said, without having to feel like you, you've betrayed a version of yourself. Right. I got you. And so you mentioned about the kickboxing class. Now, mm -hmm. what was like your first, your first workout? How was that going in? The first workout, it was brutal. So there's a five minute warm up, And I thought that the five minutes was like 20 minutes. So they're like, oh, that's just the warm up. I'm like, that's just the warm up. <laughs> like, yeah, what? the warm ups so, are always like that. It's oh, like, man. oh my goodness. <laughs> so the 45 minute class, um, the first half we hit the heavy bag. The coaches uh, throw out different combinations that we hit kick. Um, and it's more of, it's like a mix between like kickboxing, Muay Thai, uh, Muay Thai style, and then the second half of the class, we use um, either uh, kettlebells or dumbbells, or we'll use our body weight. So like on leg day, we don't use any, my, my coach calls them toys. I got you. Hard, that, those are the hardest days. But that first day, that first week was, it was awful. It was hard, but at that point, I had really gotten to the point in, the, in the, that beginning stages of the journey where it was like, I had to talk myself every day, like, it's going to get better. It's hard right now. It's not going to be hard. For and me. is that what you did to just keep going back for the same torture? Every, you, you motivated yourself. No, like, I you, like I seriously, did. like, you have to have those conversations with yourself. Yes. It's not going to be nobody else. It's not going to be a meme on social media. It's like, you have to look yourself in the mirror. That's right. And just really speak it to yourself. Like, the okay, internal, it's another day. The internal dialogue um that has grown over this past year and a half with me in this journey is I don't even have another word besides it's just crazy I mean it, but it's helpful so I live about three blocks from the gym and when I was still in that 370 380 just walking those three blocks to the gym I would be so tired and I would have to tell myself even then just walking it's going to get better it's going to get better and so I told myself for the first three, three months, first 90 days, you have to go to the gym at least three days a week. I said, I got to try this a, diff a different approach. We're going to take this slow because in the past, it was always, I'm, I'm hitting the ground running. I'm going to the gym five, six days a week. I'm going to work out for an hour every day, you know, and it's just, no, you're right. It just never works. So I said, okay, they, people all over the weight loss community will tell you like, start slow. You build up to that. And right. I said, I'm going to listen this time. So right, right, yeah. right, right. My first thing was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If I missed one of those days, that meant I had to go on either Tuesday or Thursday or go. I got on. you, got you. You held yourself accountable. I held myself accountable. And because I hate 
now I don't hate working out on Saturday. I kind of enjoy it. But before yeah. I hated getting up on Saturday, that was my day. <laughs> You're right. You're just day to sleep, to chill. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. So I, for the most part, I made it the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And for 90 days, I did not miss. I did not miss. So after that, I said, okay, let's add a day. So then I went to four days a week. And then I did that for a couple of months. And then I, I realized, okay, I'm not sore after I box no more. I feel good. Like I, I look forward to it. I realized I was sleeping better. Right. Um, I mean, before I would wake up multiple times at the night, tossing and turning. But after you work your body out like that, you sleep like a baby. And I right. have gotten kind of dependent on that. If I miss too many days in a row, I do not sleep well. Right. You start to, to feel it, start you know? It. Yeah. Yeah. Like your whole... Yeah. Your body so chemistry point, is off. Uh -huh. Exactly, exactly. At one point, I was going to the gym six days a week. I was going kickboxing. But it is very strenuous on your body. And I wasn't, I've learned that you got to build a, like, you can still do a workout, but it needs to be more of a recovery workout. So I don't do six days anymore. I do about four to five at this point. Um, I want to get back up to six every now and again. But um this is bad, but I, I be ignoring my body sometimes. Like, if you tell I got me, you. you. I got style. you. But I, mean, no. but I love it. I love it so much. I totally so, get it. I totally get it. I'm giving it a break for the, for the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Resting is, is so important. Um, yeah. I hadn't been feeling good for the past couple of weeks and not being able to work out the way I wanted to, intensity and everything like that. So I've been feeling better for like the past, like, I would say like 10 days, right? And That's all those 10 days, just been going like full bore working out into a okay. point to where like yesterday I had to take a day off and it kind of bothered me because I'm like I got a plan in my head I have a new goal and that's important too just to always kind of have new goals and I'm like okay if I rest today then that's going to put me one day behind but in all actuality if you really want to get down to the science of it my rest day helps out a lot more than mm -hmm. keep constantly just pounding and yeah. pounding your 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 body down because that's an obstacle in itself you mentioned not missing 90 days and then you just went right on to something else i'm like wait 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 so you went from not working out to 90 days straight how did that feel just from an accomplishment standpoint of completing 90 days of working out how just just how was that because that's amazing in itself yeah um, it made me feel like, okay, you, you can do this. You actually committed to something and you did it. And I think in those first three months, I lost like maybe 20 to 25 pounds that first three months. And so now I'm seeing the scale move. I'm committed to this. I enjoy it. Um, I just felt so proud. I was just like, dang, I actually did it. Cause for a while before I actually started this, I had kind of started to tell myself that, I'm just going to be big forever. This is just my lot in life. Some people just big. That's just what it is. I like eating. I love eating. And that was like the, the problem too, that I'm still, you know, trying to overcome is that love of food. Like I really do love food. Right. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. And yeah, but it was, it's killing me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like, you and the angle I'm coming from when it's nothing wrong with far as loving the food because it is our source of of energy yeah. but it depends on what type of food right. you know and it's always interesting to watch different cu cuisines being made and okay I can substitute this for that to make it more of a of a healthier option yeah. but like you're talking about this these are our are, are habits that I have to get better at understanding myself a little bit better on, you know, whether it's your triggers or not even allowing yourself to bring certain things in the house, which I'm still working on right now. Um, but just with that being said about poor habits, you mentioned that was one of your biggest obstacles to overcome. What were some of those habits and where do you figure, oh, well, where do you believe those, those started from and how did you get over that? Yeah, so a lot of um, what I discovered last year was um, childhood trauma. So, you know, not to get too deep into that, but my paternal grandmother um, was not a very nice woman and she watched us a lot. And the only happy memories that I have with her were around eating. 
you know, and she was one of those grandparents who you had to finish your plate no matter how much you said you were full. So, nope, you got to finish it. But at the same time, it's like you making a seven, you making a seven year old a plate that's the, with the portions that you would give a grown man. No. And so I learned to, that was how I got praise from her. Oh, you finished your food. So I dial back that memory, like, when did this start? And I got that from watching my 600 pound life. They always talk about how it started. And I'm like, I never actually thought about it. So I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, it probably started back then. And then I was also just given free reign to do whatever I wanted. As right, right, right. Owner store, buy as many chips as I wanted, eat as many portions. Nobody I ever got you. Oh, nobody. I got you. And so it was that. Um, and then again, I'm in Philly. I don't have any family here. I'm out here on my own. I do have friends and everything, but they have parents that are on things and have their own lives. I got you. I got you. So, um, you know, I'm alone a lot. And so I realized I was eating food for comfort. You know, I would do well before the journey, even during the journey sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Like, I would do well all week, hit my three days, but come Saturday, oh, that's my day. I'm, I'm about to binge. Right, 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 so I right. I have to reward myself now. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it works out. That's how it reward works yourself out. Reward yourself food. And then, then comes the guilt. The shame, the dang, I messed up. Yeah, it's that crazy now, cycle yeah. all over it's a cycle and all over, over and over again. Yeah. And so just recently, again, it's something that I'm constantly having to work on. I'm getting better, getting stronger, but it is a it's a battle every day. I realized, damn, you're going through the, the stages of grief and loss. This is what this is what's happening in your brain because I was in denial for a long time about what I needed to do how I needed to eat, how I needed to be, to be a healthier version of me. I was angry about it. How dare you tell me, you know, I used to be mad at my nutritionist. How you gonna tell me I can't eat that? How you gonna tell me I, I shouldn't have that? Like, no, I mean, I didn't work out all week. You, I can't right, eat. right. It's uh -huh. like, you know, you get so deeply involved with that love yeah. for food that you don't want to hear anything, even if it's from a professional who <laughs> knows the X and O's behind everything. And that, when you take a step back to look at it. You're like, man, this, yeah, this stuff has a hold on me or I have a hold on it. You know, me, that, that, that this, thought process or that, or that love for it. Yeah. This revelation though, about the five stages of grief and loss came about two weeks ago, not even two weeks ago. My mom, I was talking to her, venting to her. Like, I'm just tired of this. Like, I know I'm not going to give up. I've come too far to just throw in the towel, but I'm getting, I feel like I put in so much hard work over this year. Why is this weight not coming off faster? And so she's like, well, you know, it sounds like you've kind of reached acceptance around it. And I was like, acceptance, that's the fifth stage. I said, no, I haven't reached acceptance. That's the problem. I said, I'm very much still angry about it. I'm very much still depressed about it. You know, I said, I have not reached acceptance, but at least now it's like, okay, I know what's going on. So I can kind of not let my brain take control and like I I'm in control. And so what also was a trigger for me with that was a friend of mine from Detroit came to visit. And again, I live alone and I'm an extrovert. I love talking to people. And so she came, we had an amazing weekend. And then she had, of course, go back home. And I was so sad that she left. And it's almost like as soon as she walked out the door, I was like, I want some chips, I want some cookies. And I was like, no, we, we doing this, this, this thing the right way. We're not going to do that. We've been good all weekend. But it was like, something nagging in the back of my head constantly no you just need some chips and I realized it's because you said you don't want to feel the sadness the loneliness you know you've been on such a high for like three days with your friend now you don't feel that no more and food is the only thing that you know to bring that happy feeling back I'm proud that I didn't give into that but that was a rough I had a terrible Saturday and Sunday I like it was bad, and then even going to work Monday, I, I was just pissed at everybody. I'm like, you. Yeah, because you got uh, but it's um, like the withdrawal. Like, yeah, like, yeah, because you have that craving, and it's yeah. like you're denying yourself of it, and it's like I'm grown. How dare I deny myself anything of what yeah. I want? How yeah. dare I deny myself access to this or access yep. to that? And it's like, oh, okay, it's only a couple hundred calories. So like, it's nothing now. Now that you know, you can get through a 45 minute workout without anything. It's like, okay, yeah, I suffer a little bit later. Okay, whatever. But these chips, they it's going down right now. But you have to get to a point, like you said, where it's like, okay, yeah, I don't want to face the not so much face. I don't want to feel that guilt afterwards. Cause yeah. now it's like it's like a double punch. You feel the guilt and now you have the extra calories uh that your body's trying to process. And yeah. you know, 
we're getting older and you're like, okay, this may pop up on my love handles or this may, you know, this may be a little bit of extra back fat or whatever. Who knows where it's going to pop up now, you know? And when you process all of that, that is when you say, okay, I have control. So either I'm going to eat these chips or you know what? I'm either going to go to sleep or I'm going to find an alternative. Maybe I should need to eat some fruit, you know, for the night or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So when, when that happened, how did you, how did you deal with that from the standpoint of you, when you made your decision, when you did not give into it, what was oh. the decision you ended up making? So it's a couple things there. Um, I went to sleep. Now you mentioned that I was like, just go to bed, just go to bed. And I went to sleep. But the other part of it is that, so I still had to get through that Sunday. So Sunday rolled around and um, I found that journaling has become um, something that is helpful. So I journaled that next day uh, just about all my feelings around it. I just being, you know, I can be as honest as I want with my journal, you know, just feeling like I was in jail. I'm like, I feel like I'm in prison. I feel like this is unfair. I feel like why do I get to see all these other people who have lost weight and they're like, oh, I, I eat whatever I want, you know? Why can't I just be at that point now, you know? So it's kind of like work, understanding that it takes patience, you know, just like with the lock journey, like I, I've learned patience with that. Like it's a, it's another level of patience with this weight loss and this health journey, you know, and just wellness overall. And so the other part is just having a support system. So I got to go back to my nutritionist and my, my kickboxing coach. So I won the boot camp that they did in January. I lost 37 pounds during that first boot camp. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So I won, I killed it. And after that, I just, my progress slowed. I just didn't. So I've been at like minus a hundred pounds, like for a while. I have not really moved from there. And it's because what I thought let me back up. So when my nutritionist made my meal plans and my macros and stuff last year, I was able to eat a lot more because I was a lot heavier. So you talking 1600, 1800 calories, right? And it was some days where I'm like, this is a lot of food. I'm not going to finish this. Right. And the weight was falling off. I was right, 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 so, right. So now you a hundred pounds down. Now we had 1200 calories. Mm -hmm. And even back then with the 16, 1800 calories, I still was having my cheat days with the weight. Right. It was still falling. Right, right. But now my body has gotten used to this regimen. Now the macros have come down. And I still think, oh, I could cheat here and there. My body, like, nah, you, you can't really. Right, do right, right. But what my coach did, you know, he gave me a little tough love. He was just like, look. So, so all this posting you doing on social media, what you, you lying, you, you really not committed then you, you sitting up here posting these side by sides, but you ain't really doing nothing. So he really got on me and he was like, look, for give me 30 days. You give me 30 days and I want you to journal everything you eat. I want to see it. So I knew even fast forward, I mean, rewind back to last weekend when my friend left, even though I wanted so bad to just go down to the vending machine and get some chips or order something from GoPuff. I was like, I gotta, I gotta weigh in on Monday. I gotta, I gotta, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to disappoint myself, but I didn't want to disappoint my coach either because he is really invested in this journey. Right. Right. And so we also got a bet going that I got to get down to 275 by uh, Labor Day. And then he going to do a cheat day with me. I got you. Buy everything. So I'm like working toward that. So it was, it was the journaling. It was just going to sleep. It was just fighting the urge, the temptation and understanding like you're not going to die from having a craving. You don't have to give into it. No matter how much you feel like I need this, I need this. Like you don't need it. Just, it's fine. Just, it'll pass. You just got to sit with the feelings and also having somebody to support you and hold you accountable to. So it was a combination of those things that just helped me be like, you know what? Cool. So now today I feel good. I feel really in control. I went out with a friend of the other day for dinner and Right, but right. Time, in a long time, I felt like I can make good choices, even though I'm out and I don't. Good. Feel, yeah, I don't feel so good. burdened by it. Right, like, right. Do you think, since uh, the talk with your coach, you now have a another goal? Because maybe your first goal was to lose the 100 pounds, and then you know I'm just assuming that was it. But now it's like, okay, you reached that goal. And it's like, okay, like now what, 
did you have that feeling when you lost that initial 100 pounds like now what and then it's like okay you kind of I won't I don't want to say complacent but I say complacent for time's sake and but now your coach is kind of like giving you another goal to shoot for and you're like okay I can go for that so yeah. now you're challenging yourself and like you said he's or they're going to uh hold you accountable and like you said you don't want to let somebody else down let alone yeah. yourself so no when I reached 100 <clears throat> pounds that wasn't it my goal has always been to lose well my I just want to be under 200 pounds right and I might not make that that was like at first what it was now I am a lot more focused on um not being on these blood pressure pills right that is like the, that's the next health goal but weight wise you know if I'm like 210 and that's just like where my body's gonna be I'm cool with that right so he knew they know both he and my my nutritionist um she knows too like I don't want to still be 285 like that's still that's kind of up there still I want to be lower so they knew that that wasn't it and you know you were right you used the right word I was complacent I had because I felt like you know yeah okay cool I lost it and I was again I was cheating the whole time last year so I felt like, why should I have to make any additional effort? Right. I've already lost the weight. You know, like, that's it. That's so that's, that's just plain and simple. That's it. Like, the weight is off. So right. why do I have to keep denying myself that's right. my my cheat meals or, you know, right. your indulgent foods? Let's put it like that. Right. My right. indulgent foods. Why do I got to do that? I already exactly. lost the weight. You know, it's never so, coming back. You know, if the weight is never coming back. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. So she, my nutritionist put it in, into a different light for me. Um, she's like, you, you're not going to have to do this forever. She was like, you just got to do this right now while you're trying to lose the weight. She said, if you are comfortable where you are, I will tell you what you can do for maintenance. And you can eat how you want to eat. But if you really still trying to lose weight, then you got to eat like this. She said, but once you get down to X amount of pounds, yo your calorie allotment for the day goes way up. You just got to get there. So that was kind of like, okay, well, how fast can I get there now? And again, I'm like, no, don't do that because it ain't about going fast. You got to do it right. So the next motivator for me, there's another level in kickboxing called next level where you actually get to spar against other people, right? And so I really want to be a part of that, right? I just want to, I want to do that. That's the next level in my fitness. Want to knock somebody out? No, no. <laughs> but you want you want to you want to look at that person and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm you are you are, you are the feeling time. that I can't. You are the feeling that I have when I want some chips but can't have it, so I might go ahead and knock you out. Is that, yeah. is that how you really want to do? <laughs> so, in order to do that, in order to graduate to the next level, my coach told me I can't put you in it until you are about two fifty. Wow. He said, okay. You, he said your endurance has has really picked up. You're doing an amazing job, but that le that level, you're not ready for that. He said wow. you not make it through the warm up. He was like, it's you think your first day in this intro class. He was like, I just I really can't even do it. I would just it was suck to watch you really go through that. <laughs> that I got pain. you. I got you. So that's the next motivator. So what yeah. I got like another thirty ish pounds. Yeah. yeah. So my goal is to be there by like December. And I feel Good. like that's a sustainable goal. That's not yeah. like, and I like, hope you get there because you you you're finding more and more challenges and accepting them and you know doing everything that you can to you know execute to get there. And that's important too, you know. And it's going back to the cycle, as you said, you know, earlier during your first 90 days of not missing any workouts, it's keep motivating yourself like, okay, I got to do it because I got to go. I got to do it. I got to go. Yes, it hurts. Okay. Let me get some ice hot. Let me soak Epsom salt bath, whatever the case may be. Let me make sure I eat right. You know, all the things that you know that keeps your body you're like a well-oiled machine and yeah. just that discipline alone, which I believe that, you know, by the time December come and you'll, you will get there. You'll, you'll get, you'll get to that goal. What major life lesson did you learn after reaching your your weight loss? I would say goal at the time. You mentioned that uh, you still have more to go, but what are, what are the major you know life lessons that you learned about yourself? Man, um, that's a good question. There's so many of them. There's so many like little nuggets that I have picked up. I think the biggest one is that. 
I'm stronger than I really gave myself credit for, than I ever gave myself credit for. Um, I think that for a long time, I thought that I wasn't losing weight because I wasn't disciplined. But the fact that those first 90 days, you know, I did not miss a beat. And even though I still on the weekend would do my binging sometimes, I never missed that gym. So it was like, no, you got the discipline. You got the discipline. Um, I'm, I'm grateful and thankful that I have the ability to be introspective and kind of turn that, that lens inward and kind of just really, as they say, do the shadow work, do the hard work about that childhood trauma and trying to heal that inner, inner child that feels like they need that food. And so um, what I often say is I have to remind little Charday, six, seven-year-old Charday, like, you know, I make the rules now. We don't, we're not answering to nobody else. I make the rules now and I say, we got to eat like this right now. This is what we need to do to be better, right? So no, you don't have to finish your plate. You fool, put it, it's not, it's fine. Just put it to the side. You can save it for later. You don't have to eat it. So it's those things like that. And just really, um, just really just, just going within. And also gotcha. being transparent too. Mm -hmm. You know, not being honest about my failures and how I learned from them, you know, not trying, not trying to, like sugarcoat any part of it. All right. But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't I don't want to say there's like just one big thing. It's just been all these little things. Right. Like Several things you picked up all about yourself along the way. And I totally get it. I totally get it. You know, during this, you know, your journey, there's always more to learn. You know, like the older folks would tell us when we were younger, just keep living. And because some 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 things you just can't really explain, you just have to go through them. Only you yeah. can understand it, and you know it's your your interpretation of of life and accomplishments after you struggle with something for you know a substantial amount of time in your life. But at the end of the day, it's like I did it, I accomplished it. You know, even if you know you went on the deep end and you, to your indulgent foods is okay I did it I accepted it let me fix it let me move on let me try to do better and even if you don't do better the next time you understand that I don't have to beat myself up and degrade yeah. my own self and your own thoughts because a lot of times it's us it's yeah. us like you talked about being introspective and being so down on us and almost cursing ourselves out you know, you're not this, or you're not that, you're silly for eating that, or blah, blah, blah. You end up bringing that energy towards you. And yep. then other people treat you like that. And then you get into the cycle of, why are they treating me like that? Everybody treating me so mean. It's just crazy. So it starts with you. Yep. So it's, it starts with you. So, well, I'm glad that you've come to that conclusion of just, you know, just learning. Like you said, it's like, okay, I'm full. Yeah. I don't have to be measured if I finish my plate or not. I'm grown. Yeah. I'm done with that. You know, I can put that in the refrigerator, throw it out because I can get some more or whatever. You know what? I, I just thought of this as you were saying that. Um, I Okay, this was a big one for me. So a few weeks ago, I went to a friend's birthday party and um, they she had an open bar, lots of treats and everything. And somebody at the at the party, they were like, oh, why, why you don't have a drink? And I said, oh, I'm not drinking today. And they were like, you pregnant? I was like, no, I'm just not drinking, you know, but I realized that, so th big lesson, right? I realized that, dang, when you're not doing what the crowd is doing, they trying to figure out why you being a weirdo. Like, you know, it's, what if I was struggling with sobriety, right? Like why you should, that's number one. The other thing was too, I found that more than one person was like, oh, come on, you can just have a cheat day just like it's, it's, it's for the yeah, party what is that like, pressure about what is, I don't what, know. what is that and, and especially think, after they know your journey and they actually see they it. know they yeah see and so I know it doesn't come from a place of malice but that was a big lesson that weekend where it was like okay for the first time I didn't give in to that usually because I oh I don't want to make them feel bad you make it right bad. right right I was exactly. like no I'm, I said no I, I, I can't have a cheat day today I, I got a mission I'm on a I gotta I gotta do this so no I'm not gonna do that today maybe next time you know, right. so that was a big, a big thing where it was just like, 
those societal pressures. You got to right. how to navigate that and be like, no, I don't want it. And it, you, I don't know why you would feel bad because I said no. Yeah, that is that is weird. And, you know, maybe it goes back to what you were talking about earlier with, you know, grandma to where it's almost parallel if I say no to eating, then there would be some type of negative reprimand, which now it still seems like it is. But now that you're grown, you can say, oh, I can just remove myself from here versus like, right. I can't really remove myself from grandma's table. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's going to be some repercussions. So right. I, I totally get it. I totally get it. And yeah, we're going to have to talk more <laughs> later about just that, you know, societal pressures about that. Because you know, like I've gone through that and I know plenty of people have gone through that, but it's never, it's rarely societal pressure. Like if you're heavy or when you are close to 400 pounds, you know, nobody was trying to not give you food. Nope. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, I don't know, you know, sometimes I have my tinfoil kufi hat on and I just go far out, you know, cause it's, you have to think about protecting yourself. Yeah. You know, like Floyd said, protect yourself at all times. You have to protect yourself and you kind of got to assume, you have to assume, you know, you don't know if somebody's jealous of you. You don't, you really don't know how they feel, even though you do not want to always go there, but you have to at least entertain it to protect yourself, to right. know how to navigate and, you know, just, hey, you know, my body, my choice. I don't have to do what you're suggesting for me to do. You know, plain and simple, plain and simple. Let yeah. everybody know where they can find you at as far as on social media, websites, um, so they can follow your inspirational fitness journey. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram at heavy.she, H-E-A-V-Y dot S-H-E. Yes, H-E-A-V-Y dot S-H-E um, on Instagram. And I'm kind of documenting my journey there where I show some of the meals that I make um, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, and kind of just my struggles and my victories too. So yeah, if you're looking for motivation, inspiration, come follow me. Well, you heard it here first, and I will have all of her information in the description box. And I hope you found inspiration in today's episode. This brings us to the end of another episode of the Success Fitness Podcast. The show is sponsored by my new e-cookbook, What to Meal Prep for Beginners at SuccessFitnessStore.com. It includes three recipes for one high protein meal under 600 calories, step-by-step -step written instructions, video tutorials, and a free workout ebook. So get your copy Get your copy today. <laughs> Dunk die. Get your copy today at successfitnessstore.com and share this podcast with your loved one who's looking for inspiration on their fitness journey. So help me reach more people like your loved ones when you donate to my Cash App handle, dollar sign Christian J. Evan. And also, please join my Facebook group, Success Fitness Family. The link will be in the description box. So thank you for listening to the Success Fitness Podcast. And until the next episode, Success Fitness is the mindset. And remember, success is golden. Hashtag more weight. Peace out. <laughs>